Okay. Uh, so let, let people join in and then we will start. Okay. I hope everything is visible right now, right? Uh, uh, am I audible and visible? Okay. Uh, so uh, I think many people have joined. So let us start. Okay. So I hope uh, I made some sense in the previous uh, lecture. And uh, I'm uh, still, I think, and please excuse me for this particular uh, sloka 71. Actually, I could not pronounce it in the way I wanted to, but fine. Uh, so till now, we have understood that uh, what, what is the quality of an enlightened being. And uh, as I told that Sri Krishna explained it using the example of calmness of the ocean, that he says that even when the ocean remains calm, even when there are uh, streamlines, rivers gushing into it, this is how an enlightened being is there okay he remains uh he remains at peace because he is not affected by the externalities because he understands that whatever externalities and whatever circumstances he is into it's not only the current karma it is also the prada the karma also he understands that uh, all these things are asata these all these things are uh not permanent understand which is what uh, lord has to say in the 2.14 he says that agamo paeno anitya he says that Whatever all these things, that is all these sheath and ashit, the ashit, sheath and ushna. This is what uh, Lord Krishna had to say in the 14th verse of the second chapter. He says that all these uh, dualities of the life, that is the uh, that is uh, the sheath and ushna, means uh, uh, favorable and unfavorable. These are after all just uh, agamo paino anitya. Means they are anitya. They are going to come and go. This is how life is. So what what Lord says that. Neither sorrow is going to remain, nor pleasure is going to remain. So neither get attached to this, nor get attached to this. So basically, this is how one who has become equanimous to all these dualities of the life, one who has attained this kind of spiritual enlightenment, one who has become self-realized by the ways that Lord has told, that is being by sthit pragya, by giving up desire, by being mano nigrahi, by being indra nigrahi, by being a rishikesha, one, will, one who has attained this particular calmness, the eternal calmness, will behave as if he is an ocean and all even if all the river waters are gushing into him he is not going to remain uh, like an ocean he is not he will remain unmoved and the same way uh, a spiritualist or a sage or a person who has had a self realization is going to remain unmoved despite the flow of all the desirable objects around him okay and this is what we see even in the case of bhagwan ram bhagwan ram was sitting on the coronation uh, of getting coronated to the uh, uh, to, as a king of the Ayodhya and uh, his mother uh, Kekai says that you cannot be the you cannot be the king he takes off the throne and he says that whatever whatever my mother would say I would do that because Raghupul Rita Sada Chali Ai Vachan Jai Par Vachan Jai Par so this is what he has to say so how how would you say all those things? You would say only all, all, all those things because only if you are a sthita pragya person. Bhagwan Ram is a sthita pragya. So I would advise you all, all of the people who are listening to me, I would send a, probably a PDF of Rama Gita. It is a Gita told by Bhagwan Ram to Lakshman. And it is a very beautiful thing. And you will find it very, uh, very small. And it, uh, it appears in the Adhyatma Ramayana. Okay. So one of the very beautiful uh, Gita is Rama Gita. So you should follow all those things as well. So uh, understand this is what has been written that one who, one who is spiritually enlightened, he would remain unmoved despite the flow of desirable objects all around him. And only he attains peace and not the person who strives to satisfy the desires. And because uh, Mohit has spoken a lot about uh, Neem Karoli Baba, so I'm going to speak about Ramadas. He was, after all, a professor of psychology in the highest of highest universities, that is the, uh, the, that is the Howard University. And still he found bliss in India. That is why... Now there is a huge amount of debate about Bharat and India. I don't understand. Bharat is not a spiritual, is not, is not a country of malls and all these beautiful uh, monuments and everything. It is the land of spirituality itself. Okay. This is a land where, 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 uh, where, where, uh, where uh, Vidyuta is, Vidyuta means intellect is regarded the highest. Okay. And this is, uh, this is the land of Dharma. This is the land of Dharma. Okay. So this is the land of Bharat. This is the land of Bharat. This is the land of this. Uh, this is the actual land of the spirituality. Okay. So, uh, 
so there should be no debate uh, i think between uh, india and bharat but uh, let's say whatever happens happens for the sake of goodness only so now let us move to the last shloka and uh, this is the shloka which is give, going to give you a sense of liberation that is the shloka number 72 okay and for explaining this let us take one instance of a jal taranga if you have seen jal taranga jal taranga is one of the musical instrument people uh, people have got a good amount of skill they do it basically they fill the bowls with water and they uh, they actually make some sort of uh, um, uh, like they actually bang it on this these particular bowls um, like bang it in a in a manner that like one who has that particular knowledge of music only can who, can he make those beats uh, uh, understandable but the point is that there is something called a jal taranga now let's take that jal taranga on the uh, you can say on the um what you said on the roof okay let us take that jal tarang on the roof and now because it is on the roof the sun's reflection will be on the jal tarang so sun reflection will be there on each of these bowl okay and whenever the person who is putting the, who is who is playing this particular jal tarang whenever he is going to hit the bowl uh, the sun reflection is going to get broken okay and this is something that you can uh just uh, visualize on in in your own self that just think about a jal taranga taken onto the roof where there is a sunlight and sun is falling upon the jal taranga and now there is a reflection on the uh, reflection of the sunlight over this jal taranga and if one bangs it uh, it is going to get a little bit of disturb disturbance okay now if you look closely to this particular instance it can help you decode the biggest mystery of your life so understand just like the sun that was getting reflected in the jal tarang brahma shines everywhere in the entire universe okay this is avyakta avyakta being vyakta avyakta is getting manifested whatever you are saying all around us is nothing but brahma in the advait doctrine if i if i say they say brahma satyam jagat mithya so whatever you see around around yourself you are seeing jagat that is mithya but brahm is the ultimate reality and it is the brahm which is getting manifested in each one of us in the prakriti everywhere so it is the brahm which is shining everywhere in the universe similar to the bowl uh, a jal talan some of the items like uh, all these are capable of forming the reflection of the brahm so basically when we were seeing the in the jal talan when we were seeing the reflection it these are the bodies and minds which are actually nothing but the reflection of the brahma so for example when we were actually brahma was always there brahma is there the consciousness the eternal consciousness is always there it is only the reflection that we think that that, that is the reality which is not the reality which is mithya but the answer to the answer is the eternity of brahma okay so just as we were seeing the reflection in the jal taranga we think that uh, this uh, only when we see it only then we can understand okay only then we can understand okay there was something like sun reflection okay understand that each one of us what we are what we are we are nothing but the manifestation of the brahm okay and just as the jal taranga bowls that gives different sounds but depending upon the size and shape and amount of water our body and mind also based on size shape and quantity of karma react differently to a situation this is what has been told by my previous speaker that we react to a different situation because we are either satu gun pradhan either, either we are raju gun pradhan or we the we are uh, actually uh, tamas gun pradhan so according to different shapes of our uh, shape of the jal tarang you can think each one of us to be having a different mind and body which is actually Uh, encompassed of uh, different gunas okay and this gives an uh, this gives us an impression of individualistic identity but we actually forget that what we are we are the reflection of the brahma we are the reflection of the brahma even the perturbation is actually disturbing that particular reflection but answer is that reflection is truth that is the truth uh, i hope i have been able to explain this particular thing uh, so this is this uh, this way our individual identity is just the reflection of the universal brahma unfortunately we attach ourselves to this reflection rather than the originality so basically what we attach we attach ourselves with the reflection even if jal tarang was not there even if the water was not there was sun sunlight was not there sunlight was there it is only the experience we get after seeing the reflection but that particular chetna was already there just an example i'm saying we attach ourselves to all these embodied self that is lord he says in the term of himself deha and dehi deha and dehi 
Deh means the self, the, the particular Deh, that is the uh, body. And Dehi means one who stays inside. In Shlok number 20, 11, I guess. So point is this, we have to understand that we are just the reflection of the universal Brahma. And we, and we live this entire life with this mistaken identity. Okay. And when we live the entire life with this mistaken identity, we are actually perturbed by all the tapa, Adi Bhautik, Adi Devik and um, Adi Adhyatmik tapa. That is, Dehik Devik Bhautik tapa Ram Raj Nahi Kahui Vyapa. So basically, we are actually, uh, uh, we are actually perturbed by all these uh, dualities of our life. Only when we attain the Jnana, okay, and in the terms of the Vaishnava Mat, people say only when we attain, only when we surrender ourselves to the entire ent surrender entirety in front of the Lord himself, only when we become ekakara to the God. Ekakar means by, ha by having that uh, that resolve of Mira, by having the resolve of Bharat. Bharat had a resolve for Bhagwan Ram. No? So that is that is the resolve. If one has that resolve for the God himself, he no longer remains himself. He becomes ekakar with the Lord himself. So only when one has the true knowledge of himself, only then all these things can manifest it. Or in the Vaishnava Parampara, if we go, they would say the same thing. They would say that only when you are in the complete bhakti of the Lord himself. Okay. So basically both of them are saying the same. Okay. And only once we understand and imbibe this ultimate reality in our life, only then we can reach the enlightenment. And once we enlight get enlightened, there is no uh, looking back. And we will never be enlightened unenlightened ever again. And this is what Lord has to say in the 72nd sloka, which is the last sloka of the chapter 2. And he says that Esha Brahmi Stiti Partha Nanam Prapya Vimuhyati Stitva Asyam Antakale Apya Brahman Nivaranam Rikshati means, O Partha, such is the state of an enlightened soul that having attained it, one is never going to get deluded, being established in this consciousness that is pure consciousness. Even at the hour of the death, one is liberated from the cycle of the God, a cycle of the life and death, and reaches the supreme of the, of, of the, of the God. And unfortunately, what happens is, unfortunately, what happens is we actually get late. But it, they, we actually get late to realize all those things. We think that, okay, we have done some PhD, probably now we are going to get, get a good life and then we are going to sit and follow the path of uh, uh, spirituality. Probably when we are going to attain the Varna Prasa, then we are going to uh, get the uh, get this the particular thing. Understand, even if you are in Grihast, the Grihast is the biggest tapasya of the life. Grihast is actually anchoring three ashrams along with itself. Okay. A Grihast person is taking care of the child. So he is catering Brahmacharya. Grihast is actually taking care of his older parents. So he is actually catering the Vanaprastha of his parents. Grihast is actually catering the great, great grand, so grandfathers because in earlier times there was Shatayu people who used to happen, uh, catering the sannyasa of the uh, their grandfathers. So basically, Grihast is is another tapasya there. You all have to understand. So even if one is instilled in Grihastha, one has to do all these duty, duties without getting attached. And if one do, does so, even if one does so, he is going to get enlightenment. This is what Lord has to say. And at the same time, at the same time, we has to we have to realize that our life is after all a limited things. Most of us are going to die unconsciousness. Hard reality. Most of us are going to probably not be conscious enough. Okay, probably we will end up being on ventilators, probably people would be giving us CPR and probably we will not be in a complete sense of uh, uh, consciousness to really understand what we really are. So still there is time. Let us not miss this opportunity. Only by following this path, one can have the self-realization. The only purpose to human life, as said by Sri Ramakrishna, is the God-realization. And only if we attain this state of Jivan Mukti, we can really become liberated where we get liberated from this particular body, not only body, but also liberated from the cycles of uh, uh, life and death and this transmigratory existence. We can only get beyond this transmigratory existence and only then we can become liberated uh, and attain the Brahma. Post that body, uh, uh, once it is liberated, it is getting, going to get liberated forever. This is what Lord has to say. And this is why 
this particular chapter two becomes all the more important for us. I always feel had Lord Krishna not spoken all these 18 beautiful chapters in front of us, had he only dictated this second chapter, it was all done. Okay. So um, I hope um, whatever I could say, I have said, let us continue in this particular spiritual journey. And now let us end this particular uh, session or probably uh, the session would be open for the discussion. Uh, let us end it with the stuti of Lord himself, which is called as the Shri Krishna Ashtakam. It says that Vasudevam Sutam Devam Kansa Chanuram Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishna Vande Jagat Guru uh, Atasi Puspa Shankasham Hara Lupura Shobitam Ratna Kankad Keyuram Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru uh, It says uh, further uh, Kutililalaka Sanyuktam Purna Chandra Nibhananam Vilasata Kundala Dharam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Mandara Ganda Sanyuktam Charu Hasam Satur Bujam Bahira Pinchava Chudangam Chudangam Krishna Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Uttafulva Padma Patraksham Nila Jimutasan Nibham Yadavanam Shiroratnam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Rukmani Keli Sanyuktam Pitam Varas Shobitam Avakas Tulsi Gandham Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Gopika Nam Kuchdandam Kumkum Kumar Angitam Vakshasam Shiniketam Maheshwasam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Shivat Sankam Maru Raskam Vanama Lavirajatam Shanka Chakram Dharam Devam Krishnam Jagat Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Dhanavam